Hello and welcome to this Excel Macro Mastery video. I've been writing code for a long time. One thing I always try to do when I use a new language or a new technology is to find the most practical and efficient techniques that I can use. Now these techniques are often little known secrets that only a small percentage of users know and it takes a lot of effort to find out. So in this video I'm going to show you five things I wish I knew when I started using Excel VBA. So one thing I really wished I'd known when I started with VBA was how to use the code name of the worksheet. So let's take a look at the code that we have here. What we're doing is simply reading a value from the worksheet to a variable. So we're reading the value 3848 from cell D2. And we're gonna write it out to our immediate window. And to do this, we get the worksheet by using this workbook, which is the current workbook, and then we use the worksheets collection and we basically say the name data give us back the worksheet called data. So let's run the code. You can see that it printed out 3848 to the immediate window. So the problem with this code is that if the user comes along and changes the name of the worksheet, the code breaks. So let's have a look at this. We rename data to data old. And now we're going to run the code again. And you can see we've suddenly got a subscript out of range. So the way around this is that we, instead of using this workbook worksheets collection, we use the code name. So what is the code name? Well, the code name, if you look in the project window, if it's not visible, just select view project explorer or control R. You can see that each worksheet has two names, a name in parentheses and a name to the left. Now the name in the left is what we call the code name. And what we do with the code name is, so if you double click on the worksheet, you can see the code name. And what we can do is just change it here in the properties window. Now, if the properties window is invisible, press F4 or view properties window. So instead of using this code, what we can actually use is sheet data. And we can use it just like this. Now let's run the code again. And you can see that it worked fine. It doesn't care about the name of the worksheet because it's referencing the code name. So let's change it just to show exactly. So let's rename it again. We'll say data123. And then we'll run the code again. And you can see that it ran fine. So this is one really great advantage of knowing about the code name in Excel VBA. Okay, so on to number two, which is the current region. So if we've got data in our worksheet like this, a lot of people try to get the last row, then the starting row, and then they try and read through the range. And this can become very messy. But VBA has a, a built-in function and it's so useful for getting the data. So how it works is like this. If we click on anything here and we press the key control asterisk, normally on a keyboard is control shift and eight, and you can see that it highlights everything. So this is called the current region. So anytime we click on anything, control shift and eight will highlight it all. And what it's doing is it's highlighting on all the adjacent data. So if you've got data that isn't beside this, if there's a blank row or a blank column in between, it doesn't bring it back. So it's very useful for kind of well-formulated data. So how we use it is very simple. We can just use sheet data like this, range and we can say any cell within it so we'll say a1 and dot current region and that will bring us back that range now we're going to store this in a range so we do dim range as range and then we set the range to equal the result of current region and then we're going to display the address in a message box so let's go and run this code and you can see that the address is A1 to D15. So you can see this is a very useful way of getting back all the data without having to build up the range by finding the last row and the last column. When I started in VBA, I actually thought this was the code that you needed to read from a range to an array. You actually had to get the range, then you had to create the array, make the array the same size as the range, and then read through every item in the range and copy it individually to the array. Later I found out you actually don't need all this code at all. 
all you actually need is first of all to declare the array as a variant and this means that VBA will change it at runtime when it decides what it's going to be and the second thing is then just to simply assign it to our range which we can do like this now because it's not a range we basically set it to the value and then we can just delete all this code and let's run the code and let's look in our watch window so our watch window allows us to view what's in a variable and you can see the array so let's look at the first one you can see that just like the data it has day salesperson quantity sales and let's look in the second one and you can see the second row has the date the 1st of the 7th 2019 and 8 and the value 3848 so you can see this is quite amazing that in just one line we can copy the entire range and what's more is that if we want to change the array and copy it somewhere else we can actually copy it back to the worksheet also just using one line so for example if we wanted to put it back to h we would do h1 and then we do i j k which would be the fourth column 15 and then we do value equals and we do array and it's quite simple so let's just move it over here so we can see it actually happening so then we run the code and you can see that it wrote out all the values in just one line so you can see this is a very very useful thing to do in vba so one very useful thing in VBA is the split function. And this is how useful it is. So imagine we've got names like this. So the names come in three parts and we want to break them up into each of the parts. Now, if the names are all a fixed size, then we could use left, right and mid functions. But because it's not, we need to use in string as well. And the code can get very tricky. So let's have a look at the code that we've used for this. And you can see the code here. So you can see we get the name first of all, and then we read the first name. We do so by using instring. So instring finds the first space and we basically calculate the left from there. Now to get the last name, it's a bit trickier. We, we use instring reverse, which searches for the last space, but then getting the middle name, you can see gets very messy because we need to know the starting position and the last position. And this gets even more messy if we had four, five, or six different parts to our string. So first of all, we run this code just to see how it works. So let's look at our immediate window. We'll bring it up here and I'll just clear the data from a previous run and then just run the code. You can see that it, that it, it works, but as I said, it's quite messy and it tends to get messier. Now what we can actually do with the code is we can use split. So if we use split, we don't need all this end, start, first kind of positions. We can just do an array like this as a variant. It'll become an array. And then we just say array equals, and we're going to split it by spaces. So it uses space as the delimiter. So we use split. And now we've got an array. So the first name in the array is, guess what? It's array zero. The middle name is now array one don't need any of these calculations and of course the last name is array two so again let's run this code and see exactly what happens so we'll clear our previous data from the worksheet or from the immediate window i should say and then run the code and you can see that it worked just as perfect without any complicated calculations and even if we have four or five, you can see that the code isn't any more complicated. So this is the split function, which is brilliant for manipulating strings. So one very useful function in VBA or a useful tool is probably a better description is the debug compiler. So first of all, let's look at the syntax checker. So imagine we write incorrect syntax like this and we move to the next line. You can see that the syntax checker tells us that it's incorrect. But the problem with the syntax checker is that it only finds errors on one line or error in the syntax. But imagine that we have a for loop and we don't have the next. Now this is incorrect, but it won't be found by the syntax checker. 
So what we do is we use debug compile. And debug compile finds errors in our code. So these are errors that happen over multiple lines. So another error could be that we're not passing enough parameters. And we do a debug compile and you can see argument not optional. Now it finds many types of errors like this. When it no longer finds any errors, it, it, nothing will happen, which kind of is a bit confusing. But in the old days when computers were slower, this bit up here was actually like a progress bar. And you see this if you have a lot of code in your application and you're on a slow computer. So you can actually see the progress bar. But nowadays, because computers are so fast, it actually happens so quick you don't see it. So debug compile, and uh, nothing seemed to happen. We go back, we see that debug compile is grayed out. And what this means is that there was no errors the last time it ran. Now, if we want that enabled, we just press enter on any line. So the reason that debug compile is better than running to find errors, because if we run, for example, so let's just change this. Let's just say we change the name of this, and then we run the code. And you can see that it finds the error, just the same as debug compile. But the big problem with this is that it only finds errors in the code that you reach when you're running. So if you don't happen to go to a sub that has an error, it won't find that error. And the problem is if you leave your code and come back in a week, it looks like your code suddenly has errors and it didn't before. So debug compile basically gets rid of that because it checks through all the code. So for example, if we go to split here, for example, and we just put in an if statement by mistake, and then someone distracts us, and then we leave the if statement here, and we go back to our code. If we do a debug compile, it tells us straight away that there's a problem. So debug compile is the fifth and another very important thing I wish I'd known when I started with VBA. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I think if you use these five different techniques that I've shown you, that you'll find them very, very useful. They're simple to apply, and you can see that they're quite effective. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please click on the subscribe button to get notified of upcoming videos. You can also add any comments, queries, or questions below. And if you'd like some more details or to see some articles on VBA, then please go to my website, excelmacromastery.com.